Hi, my name is Iris LaRue. I'm director of the Lincoln Museum here in Hodgenville. Today we've been celebrating 33 years of wonderful service to the community and to our visitors. We would love to invite you to come. It's been a lot of fun today. We've had visitors from France, from Idaho, from down the street, up the street, and many of the folks who joined us today were among those who helped to build this museum. We invite you to come anytime. We're here seven days a week and we'll greet you with a smile and hope you have a great time visiting with us. My name is Henry Allen. I am a fourth grader at, the, at Hodgenville Elementary School and my teacher's name is Miss Scott. I have been coming to this museum since I was about three years old. I'm from here in Hodgenville, Kentucky. I learn something new every time I come here. My grandmother, um, Brenda Whitlow, used to always took me the most and she introduced me to the museum and I, I'd like to thank her for that. Abraham Lincoln means to me a lot because I'm proud to be from the same hometown as him and um, I'm just inspired by him to do it, be a good person and to help my community. The museum means to me a lot because it just teaches me a lot about our nations and our 16th president and I just hope that it'll stay open for, for years to come. My favorite thing about the museum is probably, well, the, I love the wax figures and all the displays and all the information. Ever since I started to come here, I used to, I would collect the pencil sharpeners in the gift shop and I started a whole collection. So about every time I came here, I would get a new pencil sharpener. If I met a stranger that wanted to know more about the museum, I would tell them that it, if you want to learn about the 16th President of the United States, you have to come here. It gave me the most information I've ever had about it. If I met somebody in the museum who wanted to know about Hodgenville, I would tell them, this is the hometown of our nation's 16th President. It is full of country and and lots of information about our nation's 16th president. What Abraham Lincoln means to me is he inspires me to be a good person and to help my community. The Lincoln Museum is a very amazing place and full of information about Abraham Lincoln, our 16th president. And I just love to come here and seeing everything about the museum. Hello, I'm W.L. McCoy, and uh, I was born here in Hodgenville, Kentucky. Grew up uh, over in Hardin in the Vine Grove area. Uh, I was one of the, the founding members of the Lincoln Museum here. Uh, worked on quite a few projects. The Lincoln painting that you see behind me here, I guess given us to us on loan by the, uh, I believe it was the Kentucky Historical Society. It was stored in the basement of a building in Frankfort, Kentucky. And a friend of mine, John Jones, and I went up there and picked it up and brought it back to Hodgenville in the back of my pickup truck. <laughs> it was tied to the truck pretty well, I promise you. It made it here. So you see that today. and. Uh, that was a lot of fun going, going up to Frankfurt to pick that up. There's several uh, different exhibits here that I was involved in. Probably the most prominent one is the rail splitter exhibit behind us. Black and white image of the creek there behind Abe it was actually photographed with four separate 4x5 view camera negatives. And it was printed on 4x8 sheets of photographic wallpaper and we just put it up on the exhibit using wallpaper paste, matched all the tree limbs so they all came together and, and it looks like one image. But it's actually four separate four by five negative images that were stitched together. 
That's how we did it back in the old days. Another one of the exhibits that I have some things in is the Matthew Brady exhibit. I had a photography studio here in the area and I had some older photographic equipment. So some of the things in the Matthew Brady exhibit, the camera and there's a sample of old images that kind of rolled up that photographers back in the 1800s would have carried around and they did photographs on location. Those are there. Some of the large cannonball in the Gettysburg exhibit I donated. It came from uh, below the bridge at Munfordville. There was a Civil War fort there guarding the railroad trestle and evidently uh, sometime during the war uh, they had a rail mounted uh, mortar gun that came through there. And some soldier or other dropped that big mortar around off the side of the bridge and was recovered several years ago using metal detectors. I have some smaller 12 pound shot that's also uh, here in the museum. And also a Lincoln and Hamlin uh, campaign ribbon that uh, is on loan that uh, was uh, belonged to some of my family. A lot of the, the postcards that uh, have been for sale here at the museum, uh, I photographed those way back in the day. Um, did a lot of work for the National Park Service, which is a separate entity, but uh, we've done uh, some limited edition prints and things for the, the park. I'm a retired photographer now, so I just do what I enjoy doing. I guess my memories of the museum were probably more in the construction phase. The community that was involved with the museum, we were in here working and getting exhibits ready and doing different things, and I guess that's probably some of the earliest memories. You know, we had meetings uh, discussing the whole thing, uh, trying to get it started, but I really kind of remember working on the exhibits and getting those set up and built and arranged. The museum has evolved. I think it's gotten better over the years. Uh, it's got a lot more material now than when we had when we first started out. That's probably my earliest. With the museum being here as, as long as we've had it here, I'm kind of a, a history buff and it, it really it kind of warms my heart to know that we've still got an educational resource here in the community that we, our community can take pride in having. You know, it's all local people. We're not part of the National Park Service. Uh, the museum is still maintained by all local people and uh, it's really a kind of a source of community pride, I think. What I'd really like for people to know is that Abraham Lincoln was born in LaRue County. He was not born in Illinois, as so many people think. <laughs> but no, he was a local boy, even though they moved out of here early on when he was a young man. But this is, this is where he was born, and this, this is where we claim him. What does Abraham Lincoln mean to me? Uh, several things. He was the president of our country during a very, very, very difficult time. And too many people don't realize just how close our country came to being torn apart. And yeah, we're going through some difficult times these days, but not anything near what the Civil War was. So he, means, he provided leadership was one of the main things. And he never lost that good old boy humor, which I think came from here in Kentucky. And he still, you know, I think he still sounded like a Kentuckian. You get that old Kentucky accent when you're young, getting started out. And he was, he was old enough when he left here. I think that good old Kentucky voice was still shining through in Washington, D.C. The Lincoln Museum is a resource for people to uh, learn about Abraham Lincoln, to learn about our uh, community, how uh, Kentucky participated uh, during the Civil War and the importance of Abraham Lincoln. And I just think it's, uh, it's very important for our community. I would like to add in closing that if whoever is seeing this video, if you've never come to the Lincoln Museum, put it on your bucket list, come here, Check us out, we're a small community in Kentucky, and I think uh, you'll really enjoy uh, seeing what we have here. My name is Rita Williams. I've been involved with the Lincoln Museum since its inception in 1988 and 89, and I kind of want to share with you folks today about how things were in Hodgenville in the 1980s. 
I don't know if you all were aware of how things changed through this time, but uh, all of the little mom and pop shops in Hodgenville were being closed, moving to the strip malls and the big malls in other towns. And uh, it was very disturbing to those of us who live in Hodgenville because Mr. Lincoln's been sitting in his chair since 1909 and we had visitors who come to Hodgenville from all over the world and in those days there were like 500,000 people visited the Lincoln birthplace and uh, when they came into Hodgenville we were ashamed. The windows in the stores were covered in newspapers because the mom and pop shops had all been closed. So with the Chamber and Main Street together, we partnered in the mid-80s in order to see if we could find some funding to revitalize downtown. And uh, Iris LaRue was director at that time. We decided that we would apply for Main Street with the help of the city, and that was done. And in the process, we made the buildings, had to, they had to be checked. These old buildings have been here for many, many years, and I can assure you that it's a full-time job keeping these buildings in operation. So we were very fortunate. You just talked with John Markham, and the building that I'm sitting in right now was Middleton and Markham's dry goods store, and it was the last one to close. And it was the first one that went on to the historical register, and we began to see what we could do for all of downtown, and with the help of funding through Main Street and with the work of the local community, we began to expand the historic district. Today, the four buildings uh, on this quadrant of the square belongs to the Lincoln Museum, and we have purchased them one at a time or two at a time whenever the opportunity presented itself. And we were so fortunate to get this section in the historic district. And of course, across the street, you have the Hodgenville Christian Church and Annex, and that's also on the uh, register. And as time has gone on, we have been very fortunate to be able to pull a whole lot of the, the whole center of the, what was the square, now the circle, is a part of the historic district for Hodgenville. And of course, in 2009, we really had some opportunity to expand that because this was a time that there was funding through the federal government for us to celebrate Mr. Lincoln's 200th birthday. So that worked out really well. But I want to share a little bit more about these buildings. The Middleton Markham building was available when uh, the community voted to have the project of the Lincoln Museum. Main Street always asks you to find one beginning building that or business that you felt like might endure through a period of time. And the community voted that we should honor Mr. Lincoln and have a Lincoln Museum. And uh, that's what we decided to do. So today you still see the Lincoln Museum many years later. But we've had the opportunity to purchase the building on the corner here. And we, it was renovated and opened these two buildings to the Lincoln Museum. And then later we were able to buy the two buildings to my left or on the far side so that we have all of these, this section. And we hope we were hoping when we started it that we'd have an opportunity to grow, but I can assure you it has not been an easy process. It's a historic district, but uh, you should try to keep uh, your roofs from leaking and your appliances and your air and heat and uh, your electricity, we have some major problems with that on occasion. We, we did uh, update somewhat when we did the renovation on one building, but the others we just try to maintain, and we continue to do that today. In the process currently, we've had hot water heaters, and we've had leaky roofs, and we have problems with the inner walls of our building peeling because the bricks were made by hand and they're very porous. And you, we have all kinds of things that happen when you least expect it. But it's been a good time. We're thankful that we have been able to stay in business through this many 30-some years. And uh, the children come to visit from the school and they cannot remember what downtown looked like many years ago because the museum has been here their lifetime. So it's always 
a question that we ask, you know, and they, well, it's always been the museum. I said, no, those of us who've been here for such a long time have seen so many things uh, work through the community. But we're very thankful if you notice today, we have a circle. And uh, if you drive around, most of the buildings have a, a plaque that designates that building as a historical building. And we're very proud of our downtown. We've had the support of county government, city government, local uh, residents, and we continue to work to make it grow and to improve, and uh, we hope to be here for many years to come. I was going to dress in period today, and it's raining, and I don't know how ladies in those days survived with skirts that drag on the floor or the ground. It would have been very soppy, so I'm sorry that I could not be in costume, but I have in times past and always enjoy it. I come and play the organ, the pump organ sometimes in costume just to share with folks on uh, how it might have been in days gone by. My husband and I did the Mary Todd Lincoln. We spent a lot of time going back and forth to Lexington and measuring and trying to get it as accurate as we possibly could, and then when we return back to put it together. There was up on the ceiling was the, some kind of tubing that I don't know for air conditioner or heat or whatever. So we had to kind of change the dimensions somewhat and try to keep it as near as it was. So I made the curtains to the windows. My husband did the work, <laughs> but we had, a, we, it was good. And we did a, open on April the 1st and I, April Fool's Day. So it was interesting. I feel like I've spent a large portion of my life taking care of some things for the community in hopes that it would prosper and be better and that we would all have a good community to live in. And it takes all of us. It's not just one person. It, it's an effort of so many in order to survive. And things change, the, that's, and it's changing right now. <laughs> Everything continues to change and you keep hoping for the very best. Well, I hope that visitors learn that we're a kind and loving people here and that we enjoy having visitors. We get folks from all over the world. Of course, Mr. Lincoln is one of the most revered presidents and other countries love him almost as much or more than we in America do. So works out really well. I would hope that there will be some young folks that will step in to take our place because uh, some of us are about to fade away and we need to make sure that we have good ones to follow up and we have some young ones that are interested. Those of us who started have, I mean it's, it's very a major, major thing in our lives because we've given so much time and energy in order for it to survive and to do well. And I can assure you there were lean years when we first started. When you're a nonprofit organization, the, the funding uh, is uh, limited and we have had to search for grants and opportunities wherever we might, and we continue to do that. Oh, Mr. Lincoln. Well, I guess I would share that in my youth, which has been many years ago, we spent lots of time as school students at the birthplace every year and we learned the Gettysburg Address. Mr. Lincoln was important and they did teach history in those days. So being our native son, it was always a mystery to me as I grew older. How come we had not capitalized on Mr. Lincoln? And as my husband and I traveled through the years in other places, if Mr. Lincoln stopped by anywhere, they reported it. So that was kind of in the back of my mind all through the years when we came back home to live that we should capitalize on Mr. Lincoln. And I think he would be pleased too. He was proud of where he was from, so should we be the same way. The Lincoln Museum is the probably the brightest spot on the circle today. It determines how we feel about our community, how the local people came together to make it happen, and how people have been so gracious to support it through the years for us to continue to survive. Well, we appreciate you all coming today to interview some of us. I hope you get a true picture of how things turned to the better in Hodgenville over the years because uh, it hasn't always been so viable and we're very excited that it is and we hope it will continue to be that way. 
My name's Alex LaRue, and I've been a supporter and a participant in the Lincoln Museum since the very beginning. I think I was the third person to know about this idea when it happened. My wife, Iris LaRue, was the LaRue County Chamber Executive and back in the late 80s, and a lady came down from Springfield, Illinois, wanting to know if we would like to buy the Lincoln Museum she had inherited from her father. And so Iris rounded up a group of interested community people and within two weeks they'd raised $20,000 to complete the purchase of this Lincoln Museum from Springfield, Illinois. And so they took a motor home and a truck or two and went to Illinois and brought it all back. It was really interesting watching them unload all those wax figures from the motor home. <laughs> uh, people in this little old town hadn't ever seen anything like that before, you know, as this is a little town. Uh, a lot of people thought we couldn't do it, but there were quite a few who thought we could. And just so happened at that time, the Markham family who operated a dry goods store for years and years in this building, decided they were gonna retire and shut their business down and sell the building to the Lincoln Museum. So quite quickly, the Lincoln Museum volunteer group became the board of directors and they purchased a building. So we've gone from raising $20,000 quickly to being in debt to buy a building. And then I think there were some personal signatures on the note too, guaranteeing it. Anyway, uh, this community has a vast amount of resources that people don't really realize until you call out for help. There was a request for volunteers and uh, immediately a local architect stepped up to help do the design work. And once the design was roughed out, a call went out for volunteers to build the 12 dioramas that depict the life of Lincoln from birth to death. And I'll admit that props that came with the wax figures from Illinois were severely lacking. So our local volunteers decided they couldn't that wouldn't do, just wouldn't do for a good museum here in Hodgenville. So they built probably the best museum in Kentucky. And it's been dubbed the Kentucky uh, Lincoln Museum by the state. It's been voted best museum in the state by the readers of Kentucky Living Magazine a number of times. And it's definitely worth a visit because it's very well done. You won't find anything much better than this in Kentucky. And like I said, I was involved from the beginning. I didn't do any design work. I drove a few nails, hauled a few two befores around, things like that. I uh, went and got drinks a time or two, you know, uh, Cokes or Pepsis, you know, we were dry at that time. Anyway, this, this thing went together, it happened, and it's been built. And after it opened, the celebration kind of quieted down a little bit because all the fun was over. You know, we'd already finished building. Now it was time for the visitors to show up and do their thing which they started slowly. And there were a lot of people who didn't think this museum would succeed. However, we're celebrating the 33rd anniversary this year. And the last couple of years have been kind of rough with the pandemic, but we've gotten through it. And I can say, when I say we've gotten through it, my wife and her crew have brought the museum through it. The board of directors and a number of other volunteers, which I'm just the handyman slash runner whenever they need a volunteer, you know, that I get called on, which I don't mind a bit. I enjoy it thoroughly. The museum is, uh, as I see it, is a catalyst for the redevelopment of the downtown district here, which we have a beautiful downtown. A couple of statues out on the center island. In 2008, the entire town square was redone from top to bottom in preparation for the 200th anniversary of Abraham Lincoln's birthday. And it is a beautiful place, very well laid out. Uh, all we need is just to fill a few more buildings, which we're working on that. There are plans in place right now. Things are gonna happen. But this, the museum is gonna be a catalyst for revitalizing our downtown. And, and I look forward to having it here for years to come. Highly recommend it to anybody who is remotely interested in Abraham Lincoln or history, the history of the United States, especially in this area. There were enough, more than enough volunteers to handle all the jobs, more than enough. We're gifted with an amazing number of artisans who built this cabin inside the building. There was a lady who owned an antique business who built the country store inside here. There's just any number of people who did amazing work creating the dioramas, and they were given pretty much free reign to design it and fill it. Of course, there was some review and a little bit of oversight, but 
most of the oversight consisted of scaling it back just a hair because some of them were really keen on overbuilding. But what we've ended up with is a beautiful museum, very informative. It's a lot more than just wax figures. There's so much history in this building. They need to expand. As a matter of fact, they own another building uh, next door, which hopefully someday they will expand into. I'm sure they already need to expand. They, they've been gifted with a number of collections and artifacts and memorabilia over the years. I know the back rooms are full. I'm not sure how they're gonna do it, but hopefully one day they will be able to do another expansion. And by another expansion, I mean in 2000, this original building was doubled in size with the addition of the building to my right, where the gift shop is now. I might mention that these are old buildings. They're all over 100 years old. And anyone who's ever maintained a 100-year-old building knows that there's a whole lot going into maintaining them, <laughs> keeping them up to, I guess you could say, visitor standards. There's a lot of old plumbing and lighting that has to be addressed regularly. Now, as I mentioned, I was here in the beginning, and I'm proud to be here 33 years later knowing that the museum is, has survived a number of challenges and has faced them and, and moved on, doing well. Hopefully they can continue for another 33 years or more to preserve and present the life of Abraham Lincoln, probably the greatest president we've ever had to date, and who knows, maybe forever. Another fact about this museum is that it's a lot more than just a museum. It's also a testament to the spirit of this community. And there's a plaque behind the registration desk with the names of uh, hundreds of individuals, families, businesses, and nonprofits that help contribute. I would love for visitors to take away an in-depth appreciation for the life of Abraham Lincoln and everything he endured from his birth here at the Sinking Spring Farm to his childhood at the boyhood home where he sat on the front steps or maybe played in the field and watched the slaves being marched down the Cumberland Road. He was age eight or so when he left here, so we kind of think that his values, his life values were built here in, in, by this community. The people who were here at the time, their strength, their honesty, their vitality, etc. And it's all depicted in, in the dioramas that are here in this building that depict his life from birth to death, as well as all the materials on the wall, the, the prints, the art, the uh, writings, the documents, the memorabilia that's in this building. This building is loaded with history and it's here for you to view. Hopefully you'll enjoy it and learn something before you leave. I, I just love to thank all the people who had a hand in this museum and hopefully we can create some other projects around here as a, an additional testament to the community spirit that built this museum because that spirit still lives. And that's all I've got today. Hi, I'm Becky Lowell. I'm from Elizabethtown, Kentucky. I'm a retired State Farm agent. I served here in Hodgenville for 29 years. I became a part of the museum at the start. It was so exciting in the community when they purchased the wax figures. People were excited and the group came together and built the scenes and had great camaraderie and it was just such an exciting time. People make donations. My family and I were part of that group and then when people came from my company, the management people, I would bring them down to see the museum when it was completed. It was great pride with the people who came to the museum and saw what was here. You know, even today when people come and visit the museum, some groups like to have a meal and so the ladies who are on the board will come together and prepare a meal and we'll show them LaRue County's hospitality. And they might go back and tell another group about it and they will call and, and plan a trip and we'll do the same thing. They always talk about the food and how kind people are in LaRue County and Hodgenville and here at the museum. We also have a scholarship that we give away. In fact, there are two. A lady by the name of Mrs. Thelma Ford kind of started this. She was a retired professor, a college, retired college professor, and it, it's ongoing. 
in just a few days, we'll be looking at applications and choosing the winner for this year. This has been done now, and I think 44 scholarships have been given, so that's a great thing. What do I like most about the museum? I'm so amazed at some of the scenes and how authentic looking they like, and the Ford Theater one particularly. If you've ever been to Washington, D.C. and seen that one, then when you come here at the Lincoln Museum, this one looks exactly the same. Then the Appomattox, that one, if you'll look at the picture in the scene and how the scene looks, they are just most interesting. So do come, experience the hospitality of Hodgenville, of LaRue County, of the Lincoln Museum. Come see us. Abraham Lincoln is one of the greatest leaders that I think America ever had. And it was such a difficult time, but he came through with the things that needed to be done. It's so exciting to go out to the birthplace and see the steps that represent his life, to see the cabin that is a replica of the one that he may have been born in, and to know that he came from LaRue County. The museum means so much the many donations that have been made to the museums, to Iris, who has worked so hard, to Rob, to Charlotte, to the staff that has been here. They are so dedicated to their positions here and to seeing that Lincoln is promoted in the proper way. People have been so generous to give to the museum, and it's such a wonderful thing for Hodgenville. And it draws people from Kentucky, people local and from many countries and every state, someone from every state has been here to visit. If I were to meet a stranger, I would tell them that LaRue County has one of the neatest museums. It's the Lincoln Museum. It's very light and airy and clean and that there's so much about Lincoln in there. And if they have children, bring the children because there's much to learn here at the museum. And we have a wonderful library that has many additions in it. Hodgenville and LaRue County is a great place to live and rear your children. And we have a great school system. There are things to do here. You may walk on the trails. You may visit the Abraham Lincoln birthplace, which has over 300,000 visitors a year. Come see us. Come be a part of our community. The Lincoln Museum is a great contribution to LaRue County to Hodgenville and to the surrounding area and to Kentucky in general. It's great to be a part of the Lincoln Museum. Hope you enjoy the video and hope you come see us. I'm John Markham from here in Hodgenville. The building that we're in right now was a clothing store owned by my dad, Middleton and Markham. We were in business 50 years here. My brother and he were in it the whole time. I was not in it after I got out of high school much, except when they couldn't do any better, they would call me in to help out, and they kept me in the basement. I've lived here most of my life. Hodgenville has changed, I think, for the good. I'm proud of our square and all the updating that has been done, and glad that this building is still being used instead of falling into disrepair and, and not being used. I've spent a lot of time hearing about Lincoln, knowing about Lincoln. I need to know more than I do. Sometimes we take things for granted when it's right at our back door, and so I guess I was one of those people. But uh, I'm pleased with this museum, and it's, it was all done by local people, and it continues to be run by local people. I come in and volunteer occasionally, and I'm glad to do that and really pleased with the number of people that have passed through the building that have been in town here. They opened the store, my dad and my grandfather, in September of 1937. Men's clothing was on this side of the store. Women's clothing, materials, hosiery, shoes were in the back of the building along trousers, I think, and also men's suits were toward the back here. Then up on the second floor was ladies ready to wear, and, and bookkeeping was done up there. And then several years after we had been here, the basement was dug out completely, and that was used for a stock room, uh, Christmas gift wrapping, or any kind of gift wrapping. 
and those discs out there in the opening, that was where they would measure the material, bolts of material for people coming in and buy. People here had a lot of good seamstress in town and they did a lot of their own uh, sewing and patterns and what have you. And we did have, we did not keep patterns in stock, we, we, but we could order them and they would be here in two or three days. But there was a lot of, uh, a lot of interest in fabrics and in the fall of the year, one thing that was always was amusing, when the woolen materials came in, they were stored in big wooden crates. People would come in and say, oh, it smells like mothballs in here. And so many people still tell me that that's what one thing they remember about the store, or if they came in the back door, uh, you would smell the leather that were on the shoes, and that was something people would comment on, yeah. So that's kind of the summary. And we did carry gifts. My brother did most of that. And I know my dad, he thought that was the craziest thing my brother ever decided to do. And they didn't always agree on that. And one night after, I, well, I was home visiting and my brother had come up to the house to eat supper. And they, daddy had been, he'd been to Louisville, I guess, to sh do some buying. and and these uh, dishes and stuff came in, these gifts. And so my dad told Steve, said, uh, by the way, you've got a lot of giftware that came in. And Steve said, okay. And he said, I am so glad that we uh, started carrying that. And Steve said, we, because he was not too excited to have giftware in China that was going to break. But after it made the cash register ring, he was pretty happy about it, I think. So. Christmas was a big holiday. Gosh, in those days, Christmas buying began in uh, Thanksgiving week. The store was decorated during that week. And then we were open later in the day. And then as we got nearer Christmas week, we were open sometimes till around seven each evening. Gift wrapping again was done in the basement. We used a lot of girls from high school that came in and did the gift wrapping. That was something else that was not my gift either. I, I, well, I won't tell how much tape I used, but it always got rewrapped. <laughs> I was the one wrapping it, so. But most people were wonderful to, to have in the store. They were friendly and they were very complimentary. And so we do thank the people of Hodgenville for those 50 years that we were here, so. Nothing could have replaced our store, in my opinion as wonderfully as this museum has. It's been wonderful for the town. I've learned a lot myself. You know, when you're in a town where someone like Lincoln was born, you take it for granted and don't do a lot of studying about it. And the, the Lincoln Park was uh, at his birthplace. That was always an interesting place. The year that I graduated from high school, the gym here had burned, and so our graduation was held at Lincoln Farm on the steps. And that's always been a good memory. That was, well, a few years ago, <laughs> 1959, so. Abraham Lincoln, and of course, as a kid, I didn't pay too much attention to it. I knew who he was, and his claim to fame, of course, was ridding the country of slavery. But from the humble beginnings from which he began, You'd have to admire him, and, and I always have. I was not always excited about reading history, but I did try to keep up with Lincoln some, and then always as a kid enjoyed the park. And that was just, when we would go out there, you would feel like you'd never been there before and run like Indians all over the place, so yeah. So I'm, I'm proud that this place here is still honoring Lincoln through history, and and all the wonderful artifacts that they have here in the building. Well, in closing, thank you for having me. I enjoyed meeting all of you, and uh, I feel privileged to have got to be here to tell you a little bit about this building. Hi, my name is Iris LaRue. I'm the director of the Lincoln Museum. This is a wonderful place. We've spent 33 years building it and adding to it and trying to give it every historical emphasis that we can to give you, our visitor, a wonderful experience here in Lincoln's birthplace. 
The museum is housed in two extraordinarily beautiful historic buildings in downtown Hodgenville. We overlook the presidential statue of Lincoln as well as the bicentennial statue of the boy Lincoln. One of a kind it is. People come here to share experiences with our community. They come to learn about Lincoln. They come to take home a piece of history. And we hope that they take with them a feeling of the hospitality and the sincere friendship that we create when people come to visit us. The museum actually started in 1988 with a group of local volunteers who all shared a dream. That dream was to create a museum that would take the history of our native son, Abraham Lincoln, and carry it from his birth through the important aspects of his life. You know, it's hard to do that in one space, but our visitors share with us the fact that they have learned so much, not just about Lincoln's birth and the community where he was born, but they've also been able to take those steps through the major points of his life up to and including Ford's Theater and beyond right here in one building. Many of our guests have been fortunate enough to physically travel the Lincoln Trail. Others may not have the time nor the resources to make all of those visits across the country. So we're very pleased that the dream that was held early on to present this to our community, to our guests, has come to fruition in a way that we are now seeing second generations of families come to visit. When the museum started, as I mentioned, we were all volunteers. People would go to their day jobs, have a quick bite of dinner, and come in about six or seven in the evening and work until 11, 12 o'clock at night. And this went on for an entire year to meet our goal of opening on April 1st, 1989. It was my pleasure to work as an overall coordinator with all of the development of the museum. We had an architect in our community who so very generously gave of his time and talent. Each of the 12 life-size, room-size dioramas had a committee. And with those committees, there would be a chairperson who did research others that did the actual construction, others that did final arrangements, and still others who created the historical story that you as our visitor today can read and enjoy. I worked especially with the Matthew Brady studio scene. Matthew Brady was a photographer who was very influential in Lincoln's day. He took or caused to be taken more pictures of Lincoln than any other photographer of the time. And once elected president, Lincoln actually said, Matthew Brady has made me president. Little tidbit you may not know, one of the pictures Matthew Brady took of Lincoln is the image that is used on our penny. There is another image that is used on our $5 bill. And Lincoln's favorite personal photograph was one of him with his youngest son, Tad, that was also taken by Matthew Brady. This was a scene that was sponsored by our Hodgenville Women's Club. When you walk through the museum, you'll see many plaques that designate those who have given great support over the years to the museum. And each of those dioramas bears a plaque with the name of the sponsor who provided the funds for that scene's development. When you go through other parts of the museum, you'll see art and artifacts that have come literally from all across the United States, a couple of pieces that have come from foreign countries. These have all been donated to the museum. 
And I think that's one of the things that makes it so special. So many people have given so much to make this happen, to be able to tell not only Kentucky's story of Lincoln, but the story that people around the world have learned and come to enjoy. They're inspired by the history of Lincoln, the tough times that he lived through, the humanity of the man that comes through all of his writings, through all of his speeches. Probably one of the most easily recognized figures in history, as well as a character who has been written about almost as much as anyone else in the world can imagine. Something like 70,000 volumes have been written about Lincoln. He was the most painted, sculpted, photographed individual until modern times when cameras became easily available. There are images that date back to the 1820s all the way up to and including his death and the funeral procession. Some of these images you'll find very easily in the museum with many of the stories of how those images came to be. When visitors come to us, I think we have a couple of goals. First of all, we want to make sure that they enjoy our overall community, that they feel the warmth and hospitality that Hodgenville and LaRue County are famous for. We want them to experience Lincoln as he would have found this community in the early years of his life here. And then we would like for them to realize Lincoln's Kentucky connections, which are very far flung. There are about 17 physical sites in the state where Lincoln spent time. There are other sites that he visited less frequently, but certainly left a mark. And we would like people to learn that those Kentucky connections stayed with him throughout his lifetime, his early exposure to slavery, anti-slavery sentiments through the churches that he and his family attended, the hardships that his family bore while they were here, and even as they moved to Indiana and Illinois, life in those times was not very easy. They were an average family. Some people think that the Lincolns were extremely poor. They were no poorer and not as rich as some, but no poorer than most of the people that lived in these areas in those early 1800s. I think people come to respect Lincoln from his humble beginnings to his death as president of the United States. I think they learn how many different things were happening in the United States during his term as president. Things like the land-grant colleges, the expansion of the railroad, just all manner of modern technology at the time that were coming about. So there's very, very much to learn not just about Lincoln the man, but about the time that Lincoln lived. I very much have liked to have known Mr. Lincoln. I think his sense of humor, his common sense, a love of humanity. It grieved him greatly to have to disappoint anyone. If he could make his point or create his actions, with humility, humor, with care for the other person's feeling, he would do so. And yet, you have to admire the strength that he exhibited in dealing with so many horrible things that he had to deal with during the years of the Civil War. The speeches that he wrote, most of them very short, very few words. Nobody comes close to that anymore. I think it would have been interesting to see especially how he would have handled the recovery of the nation post-Civil War. 
The Lincoln Museum itself is a wonderful testament to the commitment of the people in our community. It shows every day to people from all over the world what a small community can do when it makes up its mind to do something. The love, the energy that was poured into this place, that still is poured into this place by people in the community and by our friends from near and far it is heartwarming. It is something that almost everyone who visits here comes away feeling a sense of the community spirit that built this museum. Hello, my name is Jim Phelps. I'm the mayor of Hodgeville, and we're at the Lincoln Museum this afternoon. It's a premier facility to honor Lincoln, has some of the best displays you'll ever find in this area or anywhere where Lincoln is. It's definitely a very important part of the community. We have the National Birthplace of Lincoln here, and the museum has lots and lots of family history of Lincoln and his life. It's a very important part of our community. We have lots of people come through town and stop and visit both places. So, very nice facility. Abraham Lincoln means to me just freedom, for one thing. Not just because of his freeing the, the slaves, but he's just a, I think, a national emblem of the freedom that we enjoy in the United States. If I were to be a stranger coming into town, I would definitely want to stop at the museum. Unbelievable amount of history here and research that could be done to learn about Lincoln. My favorite thing about the museum is just the, the displays, the figures, and how well they were put together to depict his life. Very, very nice. I would want visitors to know that it's a small, very friendly town that we, we do enjoy that Lincoln was from here, and we would like for people to know that. Lincoln Museum is probably one of the finest facilities that you'll find on Lincoln history. It's second to none. I would just like to congratulate the museum staff. They've done an exceptionally good job of preserving the history and putting all of this together and maintaining it. It's, it's a fantastic facility. Hello, my name is Charlotte Blair. I'm one of the first of the employees here at the museum when we opened in 1989. There were three of us then. Iris LaRue, the director, was not the director then. She was the sideline. Uh, we had uh, Cortland Cox as the director, but we three employees just took care of everything where all the other people in the community had been working hard setting up the dioramas, carrying in the wax figures that so many people would maybe see a headless person being taken down the street or they'd be seeing a head being carried down the street. So it was, it was a fun time. It was a busy time. It was a little bit of a, a lot to know about and a lot to learn. And I would do research, somebody would ask me a question and one of the things I hated to say was, I'm not sure or I don't know. And that was before of all of the Googling. So I have a book that's on the shelf that they always know that someone had asked a question. I didn't know the, the right answer at the right time. And before they would come back through, I was like, I found something you might be interested in. And I would give them some more information. The museum was the least, the less of size it was. It was this building minus the gift shop right now. So it was a straight shot back. People would come in this little doorway and they didn't have an idea of what the length of the building and the two levels. So needless to say, what you see is what we took care of, of cleaning and people's, you know, we had a gift shop, very small gift shop. Actually, my husband's been helpful at different times. I'll bring him in a little bit on it, that he was always around if there was some extra heavy work, like so many of the others would be very, very helpful. He said something about coming this evening, and I said, well, you don't have to. He goes, well, all I'd say is what everybody would say that from the very beginning, that ain't gonna work. I'm like, well, maybe you don't need to go after all. <laughs> but it was, it was like, that's not gonna make it, okay. 
But here we are with knowing that it was the greatest thing that could happen to Hodgenville. This is a community museum. We take pride in having two national parks in close proximity. And we used to have a comment box and it was some of the most intriguing, thoughtful, caring people. They didn't have to say anything nice. Sometimes they would have a little bit of a darkness on something, but it was just a great kind of sharing and caring. And all we would ask is that they would tell others. It's a great feeling of pride. Like I said, I did not work like so many of the people. If you take a chance to see that plaque that's behind the gift shop desk, all those people work so hard. Physically, monetary, the monies that were raised, and I'm, I'm terrible with numbers, but there used to be a huge uh, timeline of, or mount meter out there on the square of how much money they had raised in, a sh in such a short amount of time. And it has continued. And of lately, they have done some fantastic work with some grants, and they've got so many endowments and books and things that people just like to know that they're doing something to and a museum. It's the greatest way of sharing a display or written material. Uh, just It's just still going on. It's great. Something funny that happened, I was not laughing. I came in, you go to the back of the building, you turn on the lights. You come back up. Usually I go one way and I would come the other way. Yeah, I probably screamed. And yes, I'm glad the walls don't talk. But Lincoln at the Gettysburg Address, who had been standing on a podium, was laying in the floor. So what do I do? I don't know what to do. I walked back the other way. I, Iris probably came in shortly and it's like, he fell face forward. I'm talking about a wax figure, but I thought, he's okay. His leg was twisted. His arm was out of socket. But what about his face? He was just fine except for a chip on his ear. I've, <laughs> I've always had that. I can see it again. And then my humor kicked in. I thought, should we lay out like police tape around where that happened? And it, it's just been one of those things. It's like, to this day, maybe, it's, there, he's, you know, it, well, what are you going to do? He's not there. You enhance the situation. He just stepped down. There was never any photographs taken or drawings, very simple ones, of him giving the Gettysburg Address. So this was just a pause. It's worked for so many. <laughs> what Abraham Lincoln means to me, he was just a boy when he left here, but let's go back in time. At the time he was president, he was what this country needed. The challenges that he met, yes, we have had people make controversial remarks. Kentucky was divided. But his home was Kentucky, and he always made mention of it, even though he was where he was as the president. And he has been the most sought after of his writings, his thoughts. I'm not putting a religious remark, but it is. It was the quote of him being right next to Jesus Christ on uh, how the statements were made and, and remembered. Now, they don't always know the whole speech, but they know those one or two lines, and that's, I can't even quote one right now, but he really did do a lot and stood by the country. We need more of that. The Lincoln Museum is a phenomenal place. It is like a jewel. It's like a hidden, as I said, you've got a doorway, a storefront, and then you come in here. You no, know, people don't always ask, how long will it take? That's sometimes the question. Uh, an hour and a half later, they're coming out and they're like, we felt like we were rushed, but we were so sorry we didn't have more time. But it's something that is always a surprise. It's pleasing to most everyone. Uh, they always want to share something, and I'm always one to try to say that I'll listen to and be glad that they've enjoyed it. And that's not just the United States, it's all the countries. Again, there's 
a marker somewhere that we had of all the countries within less than 10 years time that they had came here, contacted, and often returned messages as well. It's been a pleasure, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. I'm Randy Murray from uh, LaRue County. I was born in Hart and soon after uh, uh, my birth, my parents moved right across the line to LaRue County. So uh, basically I, I was raised in LaRue County. I got involved with the museum at the very beginning. I had the Druthers Restaurant here in Hodgenville at that time. Through, I guess through that I got interested. We had a nice group of people that I grew close to, really almost like family in the effort on that. Uh, a lot of them are not, not around anymore. Uh, I've been thinking today about how many of them that are missing per permanently. There's several that are gone now. I guess that's probably my favorite memories uh, of the effort we led here, just the relationships that we formed when we were working on it. I was involved in actually building of the two, two of the scenes, the Farmington scene we originally had, and then the, the other one back in the, the Emancipation Proclamation we took up later on when the person working on it dropped, kind of dropped out. In addition, I was in charge of coordinating all 12 scenes and just kind of trying to keep everybody moving along and, and helping in, in ways that we could. We had had a different group for each scene. A lot of them we had to help locate, locate materials and props and so forth. And I kind of helped along with that. Actually, we helped in a lot. We had a lot of expert help. Had an architect and artists, electricians, just about anything position you think of to complete the task we had. We had somebody to fulfill it. My earliest memories, I guess, was when the building was Middleton Markham's. <laughs> we, uh, I mean, I was, I was from LaRue County and, and we knew Middleton Markham's, so we started with an empty, empty store at that time and just built from there. The museum itself, my earliest memories were opening day when we finally got to open. We'd all look forward to it so much. It was a big, big event for us. Of course, I think, I think Corky Cox was the director when we first opened and he stayed around a little bit and then uh, Iris took over. It's a good feeling uh, to know, know that it's still going. I, I think we had all hoped it would be here forever, but it, just to know that it has lasted is, is a good feeling. I hope that they would learn a, a lot, of, lot more of the history of Abraham Lincoln and, and his connections to LaRue County. I think people will associate him more with Illinois or somewhere else than, than LaRue County, and, and a lot of them don't even realize that he was born here. I've learned, learned that and getting out and talking to people. Abraham Lincoln to me means, first he's a Republican. <laughs> of course, everybody knows I'm Republican. But he was actually the founder of the Republican Party, I think. He was a, a leader that we needed at the time, just what we needed at the time that, that he was here. Uh, Lincoln Museum is a place where you can go and learn. Like I was talking about Lincoln, you can learn more about Lincoln. And it, it's, uh, it's uh, an institution, I think, that connects us us in LaRue County to Lincoln. The Lincoln Museum has meant a lot lot to me, you know, and, and even though I haven't been around a lot since it's, since it's open, but I, I've uh, maintained my interest in it and hope hopefully uh, it'll be around for many years to come. I, I just, I'm, I'm interested in seeing it uh, and seeing it uh, go on and uh, become a permanent institution in Peru County. Uh, hi, my name is Roxanne King and I live here in Hodgenville, Kentucky. I'm here at the Lincoln Museum today for their open house and I just wanted to touch upon uh, their art show that they do every year during Lincoln Days. They have wonderful artists that come in and they display their exhibits. They have different categories uh, of artwork, photography, Lincoln, 
open class, uh, different ones that are judged, and then there are awards that are given at the end of the contest. If you have a chance to come down to the museum, it is absolutely phenomenal for something that is in a small community. It's a beautiful museum, and all of the artwork is exhibited upstairs in the upper level for you to tour and look at. Beautiful quality artwork. We're very fortunate as a town to have this museum and such talent that has been able to exhibit it over the years. Abraham Lincoln means to me a man of great character, honest, obviously, and so rich in history to be able to hear and listen to so many stories about Abraham Lincoln living here as a young boy. Just recently heard a nice documentary that we had locally, shared a lot of things about his family and his father that I didn't know. So a lot of great history. My favorite thing about the museum is how authentic it is as you tour through it and you see all the different displays and time periods. It's so rich in history and yet when you get upstairs you see a more maybe current uh, display especially of the artwork and the statues, there's molds, different mediums which is really neat to see. I would tell a stranger if they came into Hodgenville to make sure they come downtown to the Lincoln Museum and take some time to walk through it and see the rich history of our community and where Abraham Lincoln was born and lived when he was a younger boy. As a visitor to the community, one of the nice things about Hodgenville is the size. It's a very close-knit community. As you come downtown, you can walk around and visit the different businesses. It still has the integrity of a small community, yet is always there to, to get larger as, as opportunity and businesses come to our community. Take some time to come to the museum and definitely go out to the Lincoln Park where the cabin is beautiful grounds, beautiful hiking trails, great place to picnic, and well worth your time to stop. The Lincoln Museum is a great example of heritage of Abraham Lincoln, his family as he grew up as a boy in this area, and explains all of that history to you as you tour it. Hi, my name is Stacy Humphreys, and I'm currently the Chief of Interpretation and Resource Management at the Abraham Lincoln Birthplace National Historical Park here in Hodgenville, Kentucky. At the Abraham Lincoln Birthplace, it's really unique. It's a special, one-of-a-kind place. I always tell people there is only one spot in the entire world that Abraham Lincoln was born and is right here in Hodgenville. And that in and of itself makes it so special to me. It's such an honor and a privilege to live here and to work here. And, walk in the footsteps of Abraham Lincoln. I, I just, I marvel at it uh, when I walk the fields out at Knob Creek and think, you know, he, he walked these same fields. It's, it's very humbling to think about. And at the birthplace, we have the symbolic cabin with a memorial building. And it is unique because it is the first national monument in our country. It predates the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C. by about 11 years. And not many visitors know that. And we get to surprise them with that fact. And just talking about the Lincoln's family, the way they lived here on the Kentucky frontier, you know, growing everything they needed, creating their home, clearing the land that they worked. It was a hard time. It was a probably a very trying time. And these experiences marked Abraham Lincoln. He didn't have memories of the birthplace of Sinking Spring Farm because he was too small of a child but he did have distinct memories of the Knob Creek Farm. And we're fortunate that we get to care for that site as well. He said, my first recollection is of the Knob Creek place. And he talks about planting the pumpkin seeds in the fields that were then washed away. So he learned about hard work and sometimes your hard work doesn't always pay off kind of the hardships of frontier living at a very young age. We know that he experienced loss for the first time in his life. He had a baby brother that was born at Knob Creek while the family lived there. And we don't know how old the baby was. They just said he was an infant, so he could have been a few hours old up to a year. And they buried him in the nearby Redmond Family Cemetery. And this would have been the first big loss of Abraham's life. 
and I'm sure that marked him. Um, you know, later in life, you, losing his mother, his birth mother, then his sister, and then of course sons uh, that he would have. But, you know, I often wonder, you know, how did this mark him? How did he feel? I'm sure he felt great sadness at this. And also when the family left the Knob Creek farm, they couldn't take the baby's remains with him. And as far as we know, the family never was able to come back to visit the grave site. So I'm sure that marked him. He also got his only year and a half of formal education at a, a blab school just down the road from the Knob Creek farm while they were living there. And we also know that the Lincoln family attended an anti-slavery Baptist church. Lincoln's family, uh, his mother and his father was anti-slavery in their leanings. So not only did he hear these teachings of anti-slavery beliefs at home, but he would have heard it from the pulpit on Sunday mornings as well. So we know that that seed was planted very, very early and we can trace it right back here to the frontier of Kentucky. He said later in life, I am naturally anti-slavery. I cannot remember a time when I did not so think and feel. And that started right here in Kentucky. That's something very special. That one of the famous stories that we talk about and share with visitors out at Knob Creek is the story that was related by Austin Gallagher, who was a friend of Abraham Lincoln. And the Gallaghers lived right across the knob or the hill from the Lincolns. And according to Austin, one day him and young Abraham were playing by Knob Creek. Abraham, you know, was a very young boy and he was crossing on a log and he toppled into the creek and almost drowned. And according to Austin, it was good that he was there because he pulled Abraham out almost dead, he said, and kind of revived him or helped to revive him and thankfully saved his life. And, you know, I often wonder what our history may have been like and how different American history would be if it hadn't been for Austin Gallagher there standing by Knob Creek that day. What Abraham Lincoln means to me is the complexity of a human being that he realized you know oftentimes we have a tendency to deify the man you know he we build a temple in his honor here in kentucky for the first national monument we seat the marble man in the marble chair in washington dc in his national monument but he was a human and he struggled with things that all of us struggle with he had you know, he was a little boy. He was a baby when he was born. I always tell people jokingly, you know, he did not emerge from the womb, six foot four with a stovepipe hat and a beard saying the Gettysburg Address. He, he was a, a child. He did little boy things. He was human. He felt pain. He felt sadness. He struggled with loss and depression. You know, I often wonder, you know, what Lincoln might have felt if he'd, he'd gone through what we had been going through the last few years, how he would have handled it. But I also really like the fact of Lincoln, and I wish I was more like this, that he could take different people from different backgrounds and different points of view and bring them together to try to form a cohesive group. And he did this with his cabinet during the American Civil War. He did this with other groups of people trying to use, you know, rather simple language. Lincoln's speeches stand out as some of the greatest speeches that we have in American history but yet he spoke for the common man. And he tried to take these complex ideas and these complex ideology, but make it relatable to every person. And every, a lot of people I feel feel a personal connection with Lincoln, not only at the time that he lived, but also feel a connection with him now through his words and the ideas that he upheld, the ideas of freedom equality, you know, justice, trying to keep the country together through one of the most trying times in American history. He's a very admirable man and, you know, a wonderful leader. He wasn't perfect, and I think he would be the first person to say he wasn't perfect, even though we want to try to, perf you know, set him up on that pedestal to perfect him. He was a human, and he recognized human his humanity, and I think his humbleness is one of his greatest attributes. Well, working at the park, we also recognize we have our partners and other sites here in Hodgenville. So we try to send visitors down here to the Lincoln Museum on a very regular basis. The museum is absolutely wonderful. I always tell visitors, you know, you can get the first seven years of Abraham Lincoln's life at our park, but here at the museum, because of their exhibits and of their diorama, you can basically get his entire life here in Hodgenville and see uh, you know, different scenes from his life and the effects of different 
aspects and trials and things that he went through. So I think it's a very special place. It's a wonderful place to have here in Hodgenville. I always enjoy sending people not only to the museum to see the artifacts here and the old building that it's in, because it used to be an old dry goods store, but to also see the statues that are out in front of the museum on the city square. Uh, we have the adult statue of Abraham Lincoln that was placed on the square in 1909 on the 100th anniversary of his birth. And then Boy Lincoln that was placed in 2009 on the bicentennial of his birth. So it's a really wonderful town. It's, it's a small town, it's got a small town feel and I absolutely love that. A lot of people know a lot of people and are connected to the museum and the park and I just really enjoy being part of that. My name is Avery Bones. I go to school at Abraham Lincoln Elementary School but the students mainly call it Ailes. I'm in fifth grade. Basically coming here and basically looking around the whole bottom floor. I've been coming here before first grade. The 16th president of the United States of America, I think um, Abraham Lincoln means that the great American leader who brought America back together from the Civil War. This museum, it means to me that it's a very important place. It has a bunch of cool relics in it. My favorite thing in the museum is probably the wax models. They show what Abraham Lincoln's life was like and it shows the detail of what Abraham Lincoln looked like. That's full of facts and it's about one of the famous people of America. That's a pretty nice town and I think the crown jewel of Hodgenville is probably the square statue, the statues in the square, the Abraham Lincoln statues. The Lincoln Museum is probably what I think is probably a very fine place and I think it's a great part of Hodgenville. Hello, today has been a wonderful day at the Lincoln Museum. We've had such fun visiting with everybody. My name is Iris LaRue. I'm director of the Lincoln Museum here in Hodgenville, and I invite you to come and join us anytime as we celebrate the life and times of Abraham Lincoln in our small community. We promise you'll enjoy the experience, and we look forward to seeing you.